Welcome to Wheels Boy. For today's review, we take a look at a car that asks a simple question. Why be subtle when you can be loud? Meet the Lincoln Co. 03 Plus Cyan. This is actually the second time we've reviewed the 03 Plus, having first driven it back in 2020. It's been three years? Yep, three whole years ago. Since then, they introduced the Cyan trim, and then a mid-cycle refresh that included a new design front and rear. How do I put this? Um, they've leaned even farther into the fish-mouth, frog-eyed look of the first generation 03 by increasing the size of this thing down here. They've still got the strange three-tiered design, but it's just more uh, than the last one. And that's before we get to the cyan of it all. This thing is absolutely smothered in the four-letter word. It looks like a light post covered in flyers. I counted 12 logos on the outside alone. But what is cyan? Okay, quick history lesson. You remember how Polestar used to be the official motorsports partner for Volvo? Then Geely bought Volvo. Then, in 2015, Volvo bought the performance road car division of Polestar and eventually turned it into the Polestar Electric brand. Well, after that, what was left of the Polestar racing team was renamed Cyan and became the official motorsports partner for the entire Geely group. All these graphics are optional. The only thing you can't avoid with the Cyan edition is this paint color, which is the only one available. Speaking of optional features, let's talk about this wing. It is huge, it is adjustable, and they claim that it adds 163 kg of downforce. This is part of a sports appearance package that adds 2,700 USD to this car's base price of 32,500. Now, it doesn't just include this wing. It also includes the real carbon fiber adjustable front splitter and the carbon fiber rear view mirrors. And yes, they still write downforce on the side just so you don't forget what it's for. Under the hood of the 03 Plus Cyan is the same 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder that we saw in the 2020 model we drove, but it's got a slight power bump. Now it makes 195 kilowatts and 380 newton meters of torque. Let's take a moment to find out if it sounds as good as the last one. The thing is though, that power bump also applies to the standard 03 Plus. So what exactly do you get in exchange for ticking the box and paying an extra 1,100 US dollars for a Cyan? The answer to that question is a lot. You get adjustable Bilstein dampers front and rear. You also get standard Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, forged wheels, and Akibono multi-piston brakes. Hmm. And here I was thinking it was just this snazzy blue paint job. The interior designers of the pre-facelift 03 Plus seemed to have a hair trigger when it came to picking different materials. There was camouflage plastic and chrome and piano black plastic. It was, in a word, overwhelming. It's a different story, thankfully, on the post-facelift car here. There is still enough micro suede to cover a medium-sized cornfield, but other materials are kept to a tolerable level of diversity. It is a little bit more focused, a little bit more mature. Facelift models also saw a significant screen upgrade. Both of the screens in here increased by about 2 inches to now 12.3 and 12.8. This center screen also has a bit of a trick up its sleeve in that it can be adjusted up and down like so using the buttons on the screen. This allows you to get kind of a optimal angle, maybe get rid of some glare. Normally you'd have to adjust your seat up and down in order to do that, but that would compromise your view out of the car. The only problem is, in its lowest setting, it actually partially blocks your air vents right there. Scion models also come with a heated passenger seat, very much trimmed in micro suede, and a heated and cooled driver's seat. Regardless of which seat you're in, though, neither of them is very comfortable, especially when it comes to the low back. Whether it was me or other members of my team, once we'd driven this car for about 20 minutes, we all had a backache. The coolest part of the interior, though, is definitely this steering wheel. Trimmed in a mixture of Alcantara and leather, it has a very nice red button right here, the plus mode. That is the one-touch button to turn on the track driving mode. I have to admit, I didn't really have any call to use it on public roads. 
All right. Not gonna lie, I wanna get to driving this thing, so let's get over this part quickly. Rear seat space. This thing has a 2.73 meter wheelbase, a uh, little bit longer than an Elantra, just for comparison. Leg room, not bad. Head room, not bad. Two USB ports, Type-C, Type-A, and finally, fold down center armrest. Now, let's get behind the wheel. A lot has happened since I last drove an O3 Plus, not the least of which is the fact that I've driven a ton of very fast EVs. Now with a 0 to 100 km per hour time of 5.7 seconds, this thing would get walked by any of those EVs. But honestly, I couldn't care less, because this thing's straight line speed is only part of what makes it so fun to drive. In short, it's got the fizz. What do I mean by the fizz? Well, every time I got behind the wheel of this car, I was excited to drive it. It has the same Borg Warner all-wheel drive system as the last O3 Plus that we drove, but the addition of the Michelin Pilot Sport PS4S tires means that this thing has limits of grip that I had a very hard time even approaching on public roads. The Bilstein adjustable dampers means this car feels even more planted when you transition from corner to corner, and they don't beat you up. This suspension is stiff. It's a performance car, but it's compliant enough that you could use it every day without feeling like it's going to chatter your teeth out of your head. The adjustable dampers, by the way, I did not adjust them. I left them in the setting that they were in when they gave me the car. I think Lotus founder Colin Chapman was right when he said, if you give them an adjustable suspension, they will adjust it wrong. The Asin 8-speed automatic was a weak point of the last O3 Plus that I drove. It was smooth around town, but when you drove it in anger, it felt like it was slow to respond to shift paddle commands. The tuning on this one is a major improvement. Complaints about the O3 Plus Cyan? Well, the exhaust note is very nice, but at highway speeds, it definitely has a bit of a drone to it. This is not a car that I would want to take on a very long road trip. I would prefer to take it on something that involved much more mountain roads or something like that that would be more engaging. If you had to sit in a highway and just listen to the exhaust go bah for hours at a time, that would get old very quickly. If you're looking for a pure track weapon in the compact sedan segment, the Elantra N is probably a better choice than this car. But if you were looking for something that was simply a relatively comfortable commuter that added a little bit of fizz, a little bit of excitement to your commute, this is a very good choice. The whole driving experience is sharper, more precise than the pre-facelift O3 Plus. The steering is quick, the throttle responsive, the brake pedal sensitive, but not overly so. The Cyan package can be given partial credit for the mid-corner dynamics, but most of these improvements, like the power bump and the quicker shifts, can also be found on the standard O3+. Taken in isolation, these small improvements, the slight bump in power, the different transmission tuning, the dampers, they wouldn't be earth-shattering. But when taken as a whole, I think they produce the best driving Chinese car that I have ever experienced. You just have to be willing to be a bit uh, extroverted if you want one.